online authorities on this pandemic. Dr. Campbell, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Brett. You too. We've got France going back into a lockdown. We've got Germany going into a partial lockdown. We've got parts of the UK that are now in some form of a lockdown. I mean, we see we see total and partial lockdowns nationwide. We also see localized lockdowns. Is one more effective than the others? There's a big debate about this in the UK at the moment. Some people say because the lockdowns are regional and there's quite disparate regulations and different people having different regulations in different areas that this causes a lot of confusion. And the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies is actually calling for a circuit breaker, an overall nationwide temporary lockdown, if you like, probably two weeks, maybe three weeks to try and get the situation back down to where it was a few weeks ago, because the numbers are quite dramatically increasing now in the UK as everywhere. So the, the, there's scientific pressure for that, but the, the political will is not yet there. I want to ask you um, about a new UK study showing that antibodies for the coronavirus in people who have been infected don't remain in the body very long, maybe one to three months. D does this worry you? It actually doesn't too much. This is the REACT study, and it's a, it's a combined study between Ipse Moray, the polling people, and Imperial College London. And they've actually taken antibody studies from the finger prick blood test from about 350,000 people, and almost 20,000 of those came back positive. So they have a very good sample size to judge by. They found out about 30% of those people were actually asymptomatic. And what they did find over the three months of the study, from June to September, that the antibody, the people testing positive for antibodies went down from 6% to 4.4%, which represents about a 26% drop off. So we see that the antibodies aren't lasting for very long. But the, what that study doesn't do is test for the memory T cells, because it's probably the case that people get People who get more ill make more antibodies because the T cells haven't already aborted the infection. So the T cells are probably the important thing here. And the other reason we think that is we, if we think way back, Brent, to the 2003 SARS coronavirus type 1 pandemic, that affected about 8,000 people in different parts of the world, but it was contained. People there developed antibodies and they didn't last very long. But people there also developed T cells, memory T cells that fight that virus. And they've been tested for this year, 17 years later, and they're still present. Not oh. only that, those SARS coronas SARS one antibodies will combat and protect people against SARS coronavirus 2. Now, there was only 8,000 people in the world infected by that, so it's not a big deal. But these memory T cells are hanging around for 17 years. Wow. Now, we know that the, the coronaviruses that cause the common cold, there's four coronaviruses that cause the common cold, the immunity for them doesn't last very long and we can become reinfected within the year. But what the founders, the SARS coronavirus 2, the particular proteins, the, actor, the, 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 the virus, the antibodies that fight SARS coronavirus 1, the particular proteins they affect are the same ones as on SARS coronavirus 2, which are different from the common cold ones. And so it looks like the SARS coronavirus 1 and SARS coronavirus 2 are fairly similar viruses. So I personally expect the T cell response to be fairly similar. And I am optimistic it's going to be a long lived response. We don't know that for sure yet, but I think that's the way the science is starting to head. But does this, um, does this, is this a good omen then when we, want to, when we talk about the efficacy of a coronavirus vaccine? It's frustrating because a lot of the scientific papers on the vaccines have not been published yet. So there's a lot we don't know. But just last week, the AstraZeneca Oxford collaboration vaccine did publish an interim report. Now, it wasn't a peer reviewed scientific paper. It was more of a commercial publication. But they did show that the Oxford vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, is effective in people of all age groups, equally effective in all age groups, which is encouraging because very often they're not effective in old people. They did show it raised an antibody response, but importantly, they've also identified a definite memory T cell response mm. in response to that vaccine. Now, how long that lasts, of course, no one knows because we don't know the future. It could be that they all spontaneously disappear at the end of the month, but that's very unlikely. Given Given the evidence we have from SARS coronavirus 1 from 2003, I would expect those antibodies after two doses of the vaccine to be fairly long lived. I am actually quite hopeful about long term immunity. Yeah, let's let's hope for that to happen. Before we um, say goodbye, you and I, we, I think we spoke 
last week, a week before last, about the lockdown in Wales. Is the UK yes. closer now to a nationwide lockdown being imposed? If you, if you ask the scientists and the scientific advisory group for emergencies, they'd say, yes, it is. The politicians are still resisting it. There is some evidence that the phase, there's three phases in England, there's five phases in Scotland, there's a lockdown in Wales. So there's all these different approaches. But there is evidence from England that this three-phase lockdown is starting to work. Now, the number of cases are going up, they're still increasing, but the rate of increase has started to decrease over the past few weeks. So in the last week, the increase was 7% of infections. But in the seven days before that, it was 14%. And of course, in September, it was 90 to 100%. So there is some evidence that this is working. So I think what the government are probably going to do is stick with this three-phase pattern for now and see what happens. And the hope is it will get the R value to down, round about one, hopefully in three or four weeks' time. Well, we will take success any way we can get it at this stage. Dr. John Campbell, Absolutely. as always, Dr. Campbell, we appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Ben.